good afternoon. I'm Dan Ford with Ophir Spiricon. I cover the southwestern United States. We're going to talk a little bit about the tabs and the ribbons this morning. So to get started, the, uh, you're going to find several tabs across the top of your beam gauge software. It's going to be source, beam display, capture, computations, aperture, beam profile, charts, logging, and reports. On the source tab, this is one of the tabs you're going to use the most because this is going to show you a lot of the information based on the camera that you're going to plug into beam gauge software. Starting out with the source, it's going to identify your camera or if your camera is not connected, you may want to just mess around a little bit with the little feature that was put in here called Beam Maker. And that lets you make your own beam and test out some of the water here. And you're welcome to download this from our website and uh, play with it anytime, whether you have our, a camera or not. Anyway, the uh, tools is one of the first buttons on there and that's going to allow you to set up the ribbon with the information that you are interested in. This software has been developed for you to tailor it for your usage. Now the tools tabs is where you're going to uh, set this up and choose what you want displayed or not. And as you move across the ribbon you're going to show the camera that you've got connected. You're going to have a pause and start button which you'll also be able to do on a quick tab up at the top. You're going to have your UltraCal, that patented program that Ophir Spiricons offered their customers for years to do a background subtraction and calibrate the camera each time you're ready to take quantitative data. You're going to be able to do some simple things like auto setup. Um, that's strictly up to you. You're also going to have your frame format. And then your frame format is, depending on the device you have, going to give you the ability to set up your region of interest or referred to as ROI. And that will help you by reducing that uh, area that you're taking data from can help you speed up the camera a great deal. Typically you're going to find uh, different cameras running between 7 hertz and higher by reducing the ROI or region of interest that you're taking data on because the beam is fairly small, you can get up to 50, 60 hertz with our cameras today. Going on across, you're going to have your gain or your exposure. Uh, very easy to uh, learn about those items. Uh, your exposure can work a little bit like attenuation. And then, of course, if you've got a trigger or if you have a video trigger that uh, works independent of uh, any outside TTL pulse signal that you might be sending to the software, or if you have a lens. Now, keep in mind, there's always the what's this button. You're going to be able to take the what's this button located up in the upper right hand corner next to the help button, take it over and drop it anywhere you want and it's going to take you directly to that part of the manual. As we move across the tabs, we're going to go to the next one that we're going to use a lot, and that's going to be beam display. And remember, at the far left, you're going to see the tools button, and that's where you're going to drop it down and choose what you want displayed on that ribbon. And on there, one of the first things that we're going to come to is our color palettes. Uh, our Z scale, so if you have a very weak signal, can't see it very well, you want a little more definition, you can compress that Z scale and get a little more software definition. Next, you're going to have your 2D and 3D profile. If you want to bring 3D up, you're going to use your Tools tab and you're going to click on 3D and you're going to see it come up in the display area of the screen. You're also going to be able to select what items you want to see on the screen. If you want to see the temporal shape in your 2D or your 3D on the bottom or the left of the beam. And remember, that's going to be controlled a little bit by where your cursor is located. Or you can choose the cursor, which you're going to see the lines that extend all the way from the top to the bottom and from the right to the left. 
And that is going to be manual, peak, or centroid. You're going to choose what you want it to track. And it will do that for you. Next to that, you're going to have the crosshair. The crosshair is the second um, point that you can bring up. And again, you can choose to track the centroid or the peak or run it manu operate it manually. And you're going to be able to check deltas between the two points. And then, of course, you're going to be able to do your, uh, your zoom and uh, your pan. Uh, it, all those controls are available there. Or, of course, you're going to be able to do them directly on the screen using your mouse. Uh, next, you're going to have your capture. And Ophir Spyrocon, they went a little extra here. They thought that the customer should choose how much information they can collect in the uh, buffer. And the buffer is that part of your memory that's going to collect the data. And depending on how many frames of data you're going to collect there will depend on uh, your computer, how much memory you've got, or how much you want to collect and you're going to be able to set that there. And then, of course, another feature here that's uh, very important to take a look at is your summing and averaging feature. So if you have a very weak beam, you've compressed it using the uh, uh, Z scale in your uh, beam display area, and you still didn't see much image there, you may want to sum several frames. And that's where you're going to use this area right here to do that. Uh, when you do that, you might also want to do some averaging and average those frames that you're looking at. Then you may want to put some notes on a particular frame. You've got your reference or your display. You're going to choose which you want to, your computer to work the hardest on showing you. The images or the results. You're going to choose that. So you've got priority. Now, from time to time in some of these, you'll notice that uh, there are some little arrows in the bottom right-hand corners of these fields. Those are places where you're able to drop down and find that there's even more control over, those, over that particular item. Uh, under the computations, you're going to find power energy. Ophir Spyrocons developed this program so it can communicate with a power or energy meter that we uh, supply as well. And if you don't have that, you can program or calibrate the software to a known power or energy level. And in doing that, you're going to see there's a little drop down box that gives you a little bit more uh, control over the software. Uh, the beam width measurement, you're going to be able to choose it information in there uh, to set all that up, your optical scaling. Now this is a really good one here because you may find that you're using uh, some type of a lens, maybe a 3x lens or uh, a 1x lens. This is going to give you the ability to uh, calibrate the software so that you see all your readings are correct. And there's another real neat op uh, function in here that we're going to talk about shortly. Uh, divergence, if you want to do a uh, divergence measurement to find out what your beam's doing, you're going to select in here how you want to do that. And there's three different methods. Pass fails. Pass fails is uh, where you're going to be able to set up the software to let you know if you've fallen out of a particular um, uh, specification that you've set up and uh, maybe save you a lot of uh, hard work down the road or expense by uh, not making bad welds or having a bad cut, whatever the case may be. And statistics, you're going to be able to bring that up. Next we have our aperture. Apertures get very important because we're collecting a lot of data from the entire uh, area of the camera and with apertures we're able to cut that down. Uh, unlike ROI, or region of interest, that we talked about earlier, we're going to use an aperture. And we can use an auto aperture that's going to search for the beam and uh, circle it. 
and everything inside the aperture is going to be calculated, none of the information outside of that. There's also the manual um, aperture, and you're going to be able to set that up with it being square, rectangle, circular, or elliptical. And when it's elliptical or rectangle or square, you're going to even be able to tell what degree angle that you're at. And you can move that aperture around either with your mouse on the screen or by putting in the numbers in that field. Next we're going to have beam profile. This is where you're going to get into uh, a little, just a little bit more detail on the screen that you're going to choose what you want to see and what you don't. Uh, same with charts and then the logging. When we get into loggings where you want to do some studies or long-term work with your laser beam, you're going to log that data. You're going to be able to give it that log a name. You're going to be able to choose what information you're going to log and uh, it's just a long-term application. A lot of our OEM manufacturers of the lasers will take and log data and create a, a birth certificate for say uh, for that laser. A few years down the road they go out and service it. Service tech might pull up this information and say hmm there we go. Uh, I can see what's going on from what we had when we originally built this to what we've got today. And then reports. Oftentimes you need to send a report to someone you can do this in a uh, PDF file. Uh, you can run a, a complete report. You can choose to have uh, the pictures or the display screens or just the results. This is all your choice. There's a lot of information here. This is something you're going to want to download. You're going to want to play with a little bit, become familiar. And once you put this into uh, your facility, uh, start working with it on your application, you're going to find it's very useful and what's really nice, you get to tailor it to your personality and use it the way you need to use it. And again, I'm Dan Ford. Please feel free to contact me or any of my colleagues anytime. You're able to find us by calling our home office in Logan, Utah. The number there is 435-753. 3729 or go on to the website. We've got a lot of Q&As on the website and a lot of information. You're able to find some of the other YouTubes that we've made to help you understand beam profiling or beam quality measuring. It's all available there and we invite you to come over and visit us anytime.